um, gave you career inspiration? Do you remember something that triggered um, directly from this school? Mm. Um, probably with Miss Caparelli in geography, so that yeah. learning about agriculture. Yeah. And then um, the careers expo, like I was talking about, mm. which I think mum dragged me along to. Mum was a big help in, in deciding <laughs> my pathway. I don't think I would have uh, ended up here without mum. Um, but yeah, that careers expo, Miss Caparelli in geography, and um, yeah, I guess everything that just led on from them, like the, the camp that I went on and the information night. Could you describe one of the best decisions you made at GYC? One of the one of the biggest things that you managed to make happen. Hmm. Um. Probably deciding to study geography, um, because that, you know, looking back, that led on to everything that I have achieved. Um, and I really enjoyed geography. It was a really good subject. Miss Cap really made it really fun. Um, yeah, so I'd say geography and yeah, just taking, taking all the opportunities that I did that led me here. Do you have any sort of, because college, um, a lot of people, they, they do base, like, they sort of pick what they want to do and sort of what they do depends on how hard the courses are and everything like that. Do you have any, do you remember, or from uni or um, college, any important exam tips that stick out? Like, yeah, you can say, oh, manage your social life and everything, but directly impacted to exams, like around that sort of time, around exam week or study week, do you have any advice that can like, really help someone? Mm. <laughs> I'm probably not the best person to ask. I'm a, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. A, yeah. I'm a hot mess around exams. Okay. Um, but one thing that one of my lecturers told me when I when I was in my fourth year of my honours year, you know, I was stressing about my subjects and my, um, my course, my honours project, and there was just so much going on. And he sat me down and he said, look, take up a sport. You need to, you need to, you can't just be studying 24 seven. You need to, you know, have a break. So I actually started footy um, and I'm still playing footy with um, the UTAS team. Um, but I think that was a really big lesson because, you know, it was right. I feel like I studied a lot better after I, stud after I started footy because um, that's at night. So, you know, I'm um, studying during the day and then I went off to training and then that kind of cleared my head and then I went to bed and woke up fresh. Yeah. Um, but when he was saying that, I was, I was just thinking to myself, no, I, I need to study. Mm. Um, it's hard leaving that obsession, like, because you, you, you just want to do as well as you can, but yeah. it gets to a point where you've done too much and you're overloading yourself, and then yeah. you're, you're probably going to lower your grades or keep them the same, like. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's too right. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, yeah, so I think balancing, yeah, and making sure you're staying um, connected with your friends um, and your social life, things like that. I reckon, um, if other people were asked to describe you, how do you reckon you'd want them to respond? What do you think like people would want to know you for or think of you or remember you for sort of thing? Hmm. Um, I hope to be remembered as approachable. Um, I like to think that people can, up, can come up to me and you know, ask questions if anyone has questions after this. Um, as well as you know, positive and happy and caring. Um, yeah. But mainly approachable. I, I really admire people that you feel like you can just go up to and talk to without without any fears. Is there like in your whole career, whether it like be on a global scale or local or national, um, is there one place you want to go or one thing you want to tick off, sort of on a bucket list that your career has provided you? Sort mm. of. Thing? Is there a place like if you went to Timor Leste? Is there something that? Um, can back that up and not something completely different sort of within agriculture because it, it is an expensive industry. Yeah. Um, is there a place you want to go to to tick off? Or? Yeah. Um, so over COVID, I was also involved in a project in Vietnam. Yeah. So that was um, intensification of beef cattle. So that's kind of the animal side of things. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely more 
you know, in ag, you can do the animal side or the plant side. I'm definitely um, leaning more towards the plant side. But because um, I've done that work on that project, I think it'd be really interesting to go over there and, you know, experience the, the animal side. I think it would be a lot different to, you know, we've gone out to the university farm and we saw the sheep, but, and the, I think there are a few cows there, but, you know, the animals in Vietnam would be a lot different. Mm. Um, and I also want to go back to Timor Leste. Yeah. I think it'd be great to go back and, you know, see how those, you know, the people going over there. Um, Changes in mm. what, like climate change and stuff like that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And seeing how they're managing, um, you know, African swine fever mm. and Newcastle disease and seeing how they're going with all that. Um, and seeing if the work, any of the work we did made, made an impact yeah. um, and continuing that. Off that, sort of, um, in when you when you spent a bunch of time in Timor, what were some of the biggest sort of lessons you learned as like about mm. um, agriculture, but also about just like your career and life mm. in general? What were some of the biggest mm. sort of impacts and things that had on that did have on you? Um, communication is key. <laughs> you know, a lot of there were a few people that spoke English over there, but a lot of them um, spoke the local language, so it was quite hard to. <laughs> communicate with them. It was lucky that we had um, a local that was travelling with us who could speak Timorese and English, so he was kind of translating. But I think, yeah, communication in any setting is really important, um, being able to communicate well. Um, yeah, so I think that's the biggest, biggest lesson, yeah, from there. Hmm. A lot of your, um, uh, um, through your journey, um, it's important to have people that I feel that um, through your school years or going into work life, it's important to sort of keep friends that you've had that know you well and like have been there with you and like experienced times with you and everything like that. Mm. Um, do you still keep in touch with people from like Mount Carmel and all that? Like, do you, or have you have you sort of formed sort of have they sort of moved on? And you've and you've met new people at uni or like have you do you still talk to many people from Guildford or mm. uh, how's that sort of? Yeah, uh, it's a bit of both. So yeah. You know, all my Mount Carmel friends went to Guildford, so I yeah. went with them. So I st I'm still really close with Mount Carmel and Guildford friends. They're kind of the same. Yeah. Um, and then I made lots of friends at uni as well. So I've got still got the same, and then I've got lots of new So was your, your uni a um, lot of on campus or online or...? Uh, or majority on campus, yeah, yeah okay, until nice. my final year. I guess it's a practical sort of... Yeah. In a way as well. Yeah, it's yeah. Until my last year, which was when COVID hit, so that yeah. <laughs> wasn't as much on campus. But yeah, yeah, majority, majority on, in, in person. Yeah. Mm. I reckon, um, a last question we'll ask. I reckon, um, what are some of the, the people who you admire the most and some of the things that, you know, the people who you remember or uh, who've helped you all that? Mm. Um, so, Jo Jones, I've mentioned her a lot. She was a big, big part of my life um, and where I decided to go, as well as I just really admire um, my lecturer. So my soil science lecturer, he's so passionate about what he does. Um, and I really admire that in someone because you know, it makes learning so much, so much funner and so much more enjoyable. And he's just so enthusiastic and he takes you out to the field and he shows you everything. Um, he's a lot more practical, practical based learning, which at the start I was kind of like, oh, I just want lecture slides, but he never did that. He, he went out into the field and showed you. But now looking back, yeah, that's, I remember most of his content because it was, you know, practical and you were doing it. Um, so him and, yeah, and Joe Jones and, yeah, just all the people that are really passionate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. Well, I think with that, yeah. we'll wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, wow, well, um, you are a really remarkable young Tasmanian, Anna. Um, I'm sure I speak on behalf of on everyone who, when I can say that you've truly inspired us to reach our career pathway, dreams and aspirations for the future. Um, Anna, we thank you um, so much for being here with us today, um, putting out your own time and commitments and sharing your career story. Um, you really are an inspiration to all of us and um, it's great to see you've left a good legacy on the school and everything like that. And, um, what, you're going, what you've achieved and are going to achieve. Um, we would like to present you with a small token of our appreciation by giving you the gift. Lovely, um, thanks.
Thank you to everyone in the audience and to those of you who are watching on the live stream for joining us today. We hope Anna and her story inspired you just as much as um, it did for Angus and I. Yep. Um, that concludes our presentation today. Just um, best of luck with what, it, what your endeavours, your studies, what you want to go and do. Um, there's a great world out there and it's a great place in Tasmania to start and the opportunities are expansive here. Um, yeah, so we'll um, see you tomorrow for another career champion in their story. Thank you and goodbye. Cheers.